since 1969, there's been a, a wild free-ranging herd of plains bison on the southwest corner of Prince Albert National Park. Parks Canada actually brought them from, from Elk Island. Um, just a herd, of, a small herd of about six animals were dropped off, and it was to create a, eventually a sustainable source of food for the people living in that area. Starting in the 80s and into the 90s, the herd had grown to a point where it was coming out on farms and ranches quite a bit, and, um, and that was causing some conflict. When the bison come, I mean, at one point, we went on a guy's field, we counted 385, and these are, you know, 1,200-pound animals. So, you know, it's a, it's a bit of a different impact from a wildlife perspective. On the flip side, it's the only herd of its kind in Canada. So, you know, it obviously has some, some relevance and some importance to the rest of society, and, and so there's an obligation to try and, and preserve and conserve that and help it to thrive. It's in the park's best interest to see that population uh, protected, and it's also in their best interest to protect it as the farmers and ranchers because it, it can bring tourism to their area. So they, the group of them got together and uh, tried to come up with a way that they could work as a grassroots group, working with the national park, working with the provincial government and, and through the model forest. We were able to support them in, in creating this stewardship group that looks after the bison and, and assists with the research that's, that's done and, and tries to come up with strategies for how to keep bison away from their own domestic bison and cattle, um, tries to create paths to encourage the bison to go around their, their uh, wheat field or their, their hay field and into another area. We're going to be releasing a long-term management plan that was developed with Parks Canada and the, and the provincial government. The unique thing about this, though, is that it was led by the, the ranchers and um, with a lot of help from local Aboriginal communities um, and then supported by the governments. And so essentially what's in the plan is, uh, is a lot of really good and aggressive conservation initiatives, but some also really good and aggressive tools to deal with conflict and to really truly work on creating this environment where, where, where landowners and bison are coexisting in this mutually beneficial way. We have, we've definitely reduced um, financial loss through our project. We've definitely increased tolerance, which ultimately, ultimately is, that's the ultimate goal, is increasing the tolerance of local people, and then definitely brought a lot of international attention. The real benefit, if there's one that stands out, is um, the ability to, to establish relationships with First Nations communities because the model forest is so adept at, at having those relationships and maintaining those relationships. And that's provided us with the connections we've needed to, to continue to foster those relationships and bring those people into our project as well. So they've been really successful. That whole seed of an idea started here with model forest support. And again, the same network, it, it just over and over again, this model forest network has just shown so much value to me in my work where I can just go to this table and draw the people I need to, to make a project work. And, um, you know, that's, uh, that's an invaluable asset that, that um, no matter what happens going forward, um, that, that network that the, that the model forest brings to the table is, is incredible.